Hey, how's everyone doing? It's the Chase Carter Concept Podcast for Friday, August 13th. I've been gone for two weeks. I recorded <clears throat> recorded twice. Um, and the computer in the middle of both podcasts around the 53 minute mark completely shit the bed and I couldn't get the uh, audio recording back. And the other one shut off around 25 minutes in each time. And just looking up news for this article, for, for news articles for this podcast, it shut off again. So who knows? My $900 uh, laptop that I got for just for recording and video editing just stops working for some reason. Do they, okay, do, do companies release a product and then they, they let it, they allow it to work for a year or so. And then the software that is um, installed on, on the device just slows down and stops working. Like let's release updates for the computer to make it mess up. So they have to buy new. I know they do it with phones. I know Apple was caught doing it with their iPhones, which is why I will never buy an Apple product a day in my life. Do I own Apple stock? Yes, I do. It's like, I'm going to make money off of it. They're not going to sell me a product that they purposely, uh, purposely program to go slower. So you buy the new iPhones. That should have been a much bigger news story than it was. But I don't know if that's what's going on with my uh, my laptop. My should, w- Would I have to buy a new laptop? I don't know. I don't know. But I'm sure it'll be fine. But anyways, my week's been going good. My last three weeks have been going good. Um, I'm going to dive into some weird new, um, new stories. Britney Spears is free. Everyone who didn't care about Britney that cares all of a sudden you fake you f- you oh you s- whatever the signaling is virtue signaling once you don't think like anyone who has seen her instagram posts realize that so, so, she's not all there she doesn't appear to be she looks like someone who might be on medication or might need um a therapist and all these other things you don't think that, now, granted, I don't, I haven't looked too deep into it, but I don't know what her father has done, all the crazy sh- things that he's been accused of. I have no idea because I'm not part of them. All I can see is that girl needs some, assi- we all have someone in our family that doesn't know how to take care of themselves fully. Okay. And then w- when we just let them go by, you know, on their own accord, they just like, oh, I wouldn't do, oh, I wouldn't do that. But she has the family fortune, basically generational wealth. And like, maybe the dad's like, let's keep, let's, she wants to go on vacations every weekend with her hot boyfriend. Have you seen that man? Jesus. If that's not a fuck boy, I, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I've cursed. No, if that guy's not a fuck boy, I don't know who else is. And I'm jealous of him. Not the fact because Britney Spears. Now, would I have sex with Britney Spears now? But is it the same reason I would, I would, you know, hook up with Brad Pitt? Same reason, just for the story? Just for the, you know, the bragging rights? I don't know. I don't know. Because I can't get those crazy Instagram eyes on her posts out of my head. I'm like, this girl seems a little, but maybe that means she's good in bed. Who knows? Who knows? I think I'd roll the dice. I think I'd roll the dice. But good Lord. That lady, she's doing, I saw some posts, she's doing the Titanic king of the world at the front of a ship with her boyfriend. Could you imagine the things that she makes him do? And he doesn't stand up for himself because that's his, that's his uh, golden ticket. It's like, look, I hope this crazy bitch uh, marries me without a prenup pretty soon. And then in three to four years, I can divorce her and take half of her money. And then he's the new hotness on the streets. Like what she's doing. So she's mentally, first, if you ever do, I mean, maybe that's just a chick thing, the same thing with you idiots who post, who see wings on a wall 
and then you post there because well, you want to be a fairy? You want to be an an angel? What if, I don't know what this I don't know what this this fat is. Look at me, this is me with painted wings. So you just want to put more fake stuff on you? All the makeup, hair extensions, um extend uh eyelash extenders. You want to you want to put fake wings on you? You want to fly? And then when I see a fat girl, like, you know, stand up against the wall, I'm like, hey, okay, easy, don't lean up against the wall. That's not, that's not fully supported. That's not cemented into the foundation. Don't do it. And then also, you're going to need some bigger wings, lady. Those wings are far too small to carry your ass around. Far too small. This is not, I don't, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I'm not too sure. This, I think every generation is the same, but the past generation thinks it's different. Thinks what is? I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. My girlfriend, bless her heart, she um, has to. She has to have a project, and she has to rearrange things in our one-bedroom apartment. And she says she wants to um, buy a piece of land and just get a trailer. And live on the trailer for a while and save up money to build our own place, which is fine. And that, 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 that's another thing I wonder. Would it be smart to like mod, modulely, modulely, I can't even say the word, so it's probably not a good idea that I implement that plan. Modularly, literally, build a house. So like build like the living room and then build like an extension of that. Have a, Have a plan, but then build it in sections. I don't know. Maybe it's just better to build a house all at once. Like you have the people there, build it all at once, get it all done. But I don't know. I'm not I'm not a house builder. Who knows? Maybe do they sell modular houses? Can I just buy a um, living room, plop it down on some land, and then buy, you know, these spare bedrooms? I don't care what my house looks like. I really don't. Couldn't care less. Is it comfortable in the inside? Does it have, you know, fast internet that's all i couldn't care look at the people like oh look at that house on there no i don't care don't care maybe when i sell it i do but when you buy a house you don't you keep it 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 unless you can't afford to keep it then you sell it but if you can afford to keep it you keep the house no yeah my girlfriend she um she has her little video game stand. Her little, where um, has like a little bar table. She puts her video games on in her monitor, and she sits. She sits there. It's been perfectly fine for months. And then all of a sudden, she's like, "Well, I want something more comfortable to sit in." I was like, "Get a gaming chair." Real simple. I don't want a big giant gaming chair. I was like, "You have two chairs. It's the same. They're not gigantic. It's not a sofa. It's not a you know a lazy boy um, recliner chair. It's just a." A normal office chair, basically, that has a little bit more padding. Because we sit in, video gamers sit in it for hours and hours and hours. She sees one. Oh, that's lumbar support. That's nice. And then stops with that and then wants to rearrange the entire living room because she wants to play games and sit next to her cat. It's like you have two chairs in the living room. Put the cat's bed on the chair where he has slept and laid before. He Sometimes he sleeps on the couch. Sometimes he sleeps on the chair. He, he's, he, he's everywhere. He's a cat. No, I want him because sometimes he gets up and doesn't want to be on the chair. I'm like, sometimes I think he just doesn't want to be next to you sometimes because he's a cat. He does his own thing. Sometimes he wants cuddles and sometimes he doesn't want anything to do with anybody. And he leaves the house for hours upon end. But she, every time I, I sit on the couch... He, he stays there. He, so I want to be able to sit. So now we had to rehook. And by we, I mean me. She, she tried to do it. And she was so, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's women or just her. She's very rough with electronics. And if anyone doesn't take care of elect, expensive electronics, I just cringe. She, was, she had the Xbox Series S in her hand. And she everything was plugged in. And she was moving it around violently. I'm like, no, everything's plugged in. What are you doing? 
the, the ports could bend. They could bend the ports. You can bend the HDMI, and then it won't fit in properly. Then the whole thing's ruined. What are you doing? Unplug Ethernet cords plugged in, and you're moving into. Oh God. Oh, she like. And it wasn't a subtle two inch adjustment to one side or the other. It was feet. She was moving this thing. She was carrying it around in her hand like it was a sack of apples. And I'm like, what do you do? What could you just unplug everything? Could you unplug? Then that cord, I had to do it. Unplugged everything, moved it to where she wanted it. And then now, instead of on the bar table that the, the monitor is on, it's on one of the chairs that she sat in because it's easier to move the chair closer to the couch. So now she has this extended um, chair video game monitor thing that we put in the middle of the living room, which is fine. I don't care what she does. But I know in a month or two, we're going to have to do something else because she's going to get bored. And the real question is, when is she going to get bored of me pretty quickly? Granted, she always seems very happy when she comes home to see me, which I don't know. I think she's mentally unstable. I think there's a chemical imbalance in her brain um, that she's not aware of, obviously. And let's keep the chemical imbalance going because I like her so she can stick around as long as she wants. But uh, some, sometimes she does the she's the weirdest, the the weirdest and dumbest things to where I'm like, how do you um, like survive in life? How do you survive in life? We went to like a family um, cookout barbecue. And so her family had the food. Um, there's a, a pool area that's walled off. And then there's like this little food table eating thing on the side. So we go get food and I'm like, Hey, let's go eat with your family. That's they're already, um, swimming in, in the pool area. And she's like, no, I don't think um, it's allowed to have food at the pool area. I'm like, what? She's like, no, I, I don't want to break the hot. What? You, th you think a, this, and we're at a hotel. You think the hotel has strict guidelines about where to eat food? They, they have the food here because this is where the barbecue is. That's why the food is here. We can take the food anywhere. This is a free country. I don't know if you know, realize this. Still a free country, regardless of the vaccine passports. Still a free country. You want to fly? You have to. These are our regulations to fly. We're a private business. We can do whatever we want. So, I don't know. So, what, what what's wrong with your brain? I don't understand what's wrong with your brain. I'm like, your family's going to think we're weird sitting over here by ourselves. Got this thing little thing on my phone. I don't know what that is. There we go. I got it off. Excuse me. It's like a little smudge, a little smooch. Um, but I don't understand. And then she'll do something genius. I've been trying to the doorknob, bathroom doorknob's been messing up and it's a doorknob from the 1913s. And I don't understand why this one screw won't fit into the doorknob. And I, the threads are messed up on the screw or they're messed up on the doorknob itself. I've tried to get different screws. None of them fit. I took it down to, I took the doorknob down to Lowe's hardware. I found a, I found a display screw that fit, but they don't have any screws that match that display screw. So it's a big ordeal, big old ordeal. And um, I, I don't know. Besides super gluing the doorknob together, I don't know what to do. Um, we call our landlord because we're renting the place. That's what we're going to do. Like, fix our doorknobs, please. Or I'll, I'll drill a hole. I'll put a whole new door. I mean, you're, you're not going to like the doorknob I put on the, the door. I'm going to drill a whole new hole. A whole new hole. A, um, but yeah, so, it's, so every time you pulled on the doorknob, the doorknob would come off. You have to kind of gently figure out like when it, when it grabs and then you pull it off because the screw that fastens it to the bolt that goes through the door, it would fit sometimes and then not fit other times. It was very finicky. I had it working. The longest I had it working for was about two and a half weeks. I was very proud of those two and a half weeks. Okay. I got a good attaboy for fixing the doorknob. But then after, I don't know what she does with the doorknob, but she must like just gorilla arm it and tear the thing off anyway. So when you're inside the bathroom, you pull the door open. And then the other doorknob on the other side was completely fine. That thing was, feels like it's super glued. That thing's not moving. 
So do you know what she, so I'm working on this thing for days, weeks, trying to, you know, off and on. So probably, you know, a couple days worth of time. And then what she does, she just flips the doorknob around. So the one that we pulled off, we push. And the one that we've pulled, we've been pulling on that doesn't move. We, or the one that we push and hasn't moved, we pull and the door works fine. And I'm just like, where, where are these genius ideas in other aspects of your life? Cause I don't, I don't, I don't know. She just comes up with these brilliant ideas. She had another brilliant idea. I can't remember what it is or what it was. And then just playing video games with her sea of thieves. Everything has to be simplified down to ch a child IQ level. And then she'll come up with this brilliant idea out of nowhere. I'm just, oh, okay. That's how your brain works. It's like dumb, 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 genius, dumb, dumb, dumb. And I never reach the genius part. I'm just below average, you know, just below average stupidity consistently. But she's just mentally handicapped, head trauma, you know, medic, medical, you know, medication overdose, brain just, just gone, you know, coma inducing uh, brain activity, and then uh, Beethoven like symphony. And I was like, oh, flip the doorknob around. Oh, I would have never thought of that. Beautiful. Now, I don't know what she's doing with me. So this could be one of her dumb decisions, to be honest. But what, what have we been doing? We've been playing uh, Sea of Thieves still. We're still grinding away on the Sea of Thieves pirate game. I recommend any couple who owns an Xbox to play. It will um, help you communicate in your relationship for sure. Um, she's still nerd every day. She comes home and wants to play Sea of Thieves. And now she's, or we're finally getting through Halo. We're playing more Halo. Um, we played Halo 1, 2, and 3. She really liked the ending of 3. And then she also um, pointed out that the ending of 3 was just like the ending of 1. Because you get on a warthog and you have to escape a place before it explodes. And I'm like, yeah, that's what everyone liked. And everyone bitched about the Halo 2 ending because they cut out a huge huge portion of the game because they couldn't finish it in time. And Halo 2 ended on a cliffhanger. Dummies. And then they were like, oh, well, we have to give them what we didn't give them in Halo 2, so let's put the same, basically the same level at Halo 1 at the end of Halo 3. And we loved it. Video game fans are so easy to please. So easy to please. Give them something they like, and then the sequel, take it away, and then in the next sequel, give it to them again. Just rinse and repeat. Rinse and repeat. That's it's a great uh, business tactic. Great business tactic. NBA 2K does this all the time. He's like, oh, you like that fe that mo that mode in park? Well, we're going to take it away. Oh, and then next year, we're going to bring it back. Ooh, give us praise for just pushing a button and then putting it back in. Did you create anything new? No, we just got put the old stuff in the new stuff, and then it's brand new. Shoot me in the head. Um, but yeah, it's good. And then, so Halo's good. She's liking Halo ODST the most. I think it's because she likes having a map and kind of being, you don't really go wherever you want. It's not an open world, but it's more open than obviously the other, the other Halo games, like semi-open. So it's good. It's good. She's liking it. And then, oh, I want to get to uh, my friend Raymond came down last weekend. And Jesus, Jesus, Lord, bless his heart. This guy has so many issues. I don't understand. He, do, he doesn't think he has, he has, he has a drinking problem. Um, my, uh, girlfriend said, yeah, you have, um, you're an alcoholic. And then he just gets real defensive. He's like, no, no not alcoholic. I don't drink every day, drink every day. I'm like, well, that's not what a, that's, there's different levels to being an alcoholic. You could drink once a month, but then just get plastered blackout drunk and not really, and have a terrible time. But then you can't stop doing this. There's that level. There's a bunch of different levels of being an alcoholic. You can be an alcoholic and, and stop drinking and not drink anymore and still be an alcoholic. And you haven't had a drink in, you know, years, you're still addicted to it. So if 
there are negative consequences. And this isn't the first time. Ray got drunk again, has, crying hysterically. Um, and then he couldn't find... So they well, I'm, 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 they go... Um, Corey and her friend and Ray go to a bar, small bar up the street. They're dancing, having a good time. Corey doesn't drink. Corey drinks max three to four drink max and normally it's two normally it's one and a half yeah she has her little martinis she's a little tipsy she's normally goofy anyway so she doesn't need that social lubricant to loosen her up and she's happy with who she is she's self-satisfied so she doesn't need to drink to become somebody else um which is another issue and then so i guess Corey's friend leaves and then it's just ray and Corey at the bar or at, at this club bar thing. There's like a dancing half of it's a bar. And then the other half is like a little dance club section or whatever. So Corey's dancing, ooh, ooh, dancing, right? All the small things. So she's dancing to this music, I guess, dancing right. Um, it's what midnight, midnight or one minute. I can't remember. I get a call from Ray. I stay home. I'm not a dancer. And I, me and Ray just went to the bar the night before and I had two or three beers and I'm like, I'm, I don't want to drink two nights in a row. I'm good. This is fine. Corey, like, and then Corey wanted to go dancing and I'm, I, I don't want to, I'm, I'm not going to dance. And then I'm going to feel weird saying no to my girlfriend. Like, no, I don't want to dance. She's going to be pulling on me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm like, no, I don't want to. Then I ruin it, and I'm the fun sucker or the energy drainer out of the thing. I don't want to do that to everybody. Go have fun. Go have fun without me. I'll stay home and play video games. I'll stay home and watch, you know, TV shows. I can't remember what TV show I was watching. Was it Bosch? I'm still on Bosch, but I don't think it was some something else, some new show. That I was it a movie? I think it was a movie. Oh yeah, it was a movie. No good. Oh, what was that? It had um, Don Cheadle in it. I'm going to look this up real quick. Don Cheadle movies. It had Don Cheadle. It had um, Benicio de Toro. Uh, what was it? It was a good, um, like, 1950s. It actually had to do with a, um, a real-life story. It was based on a true story. Uh, Don Cheadle. Not net worth. I don't care about his net worth. Movies. Trying to see at Benicio del Toro. It had uh, Brendan Frazier. What is it? Not Hotel Rwanda. No Infinity War. No Boogie Nights. No Captain. All the no Ocean's Twelve. Good movie. Oh, we're drive heavy back, sir. Heavy back. How good of an actor is Don Cheadle? Jesus, likable. Come on, where is Don Cheadle's Space Jam: New Legacy? How? What meteor? Oh yeah, meteor man. <laughs> I remember meteor man. That was funny. Um. Okay, I'm gonna have to go to Don Cheadle's IMDb. I can't, but I recommend this movie. It's just came out. I think trivia. No, don't care. How do I? Why isn't this loading? I'm gonna scream. Filmography. All filmography. Come on. Actor. Actor. He's been in 101 movies. Jeez. Like a porn star, Don Cheadle. Uh, White Noise, The Wonder Years, Armor Wars, Black Stallions, No Black Monday, Space Jam. No Sudden Move. That's the movie. Came out in 2021. It's got Benicio Del Toro. Really good movie. Liked it. Liked it a lot. Has to do with the catalytic converter. Um, it's also got the the dad from Stranger Things in it. I can't get his name because my phone won't work because they're slowing it down on purpose. Download download the IMDb app. No, I don't want. I'm on your website. Fuck off, David uh, Harbor, Harborough. It's got John Hamm in it. Brendan Fraser. It's got a lot of good people. It's got like hold on, my alarm on my phone's going off. Jeez.
All right, I'm back. I have annoying alarms that go off to remind me of things. And then I forget about them while I'm doing other things. So besides, but good movie. Really good movie. I recommend going and seeing that. It's really good. Actually, not going to see. You can download it or stream it. Whatever. Okay. The alarm threw me off. I'm not in the same, but it's a good movie. Um, so Raymond, besides that, so I was sitting. So um, Raymond and her are at the the bar. I'm watching Don Cheadle and Benicio Del Toro's sexy ass try to navigate this whole gangster mob um, thing. And it later became a, uh, I guess a huge um, antitrust lawsuit about the catalytic converter. They knew um, the exhaust from vehicles was extremely toxic. Um, they covered it up. They even created uh, the catalytic converter, which takes a lot of that, the, the most nasty shit, I guess, out of the air. Um, they created that, but then said that it was the technology wasn't feasible, yet they had the plans and documents for it. So it was very cool. Um, I was like, oh, it's like surprise, surprise. The big companies are trying to screw over everybody else just for profit. Oh, surprise, 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 surprise. But um, so I'm sitting innocently at home, letting my friends have fun. And do you think Raymond is a responsible adult who has, you know, three or four drinks, gets a little buzz? No, he doesn't. He orders a beer, two shots, beer, two shots, beer, because for some reason he likes to get fucked up beyond it being fun anymore and then just gets emotional and cries over things now granted he does have a few things to cry about not saying that but let's not do that while drunk can we can we have a sober cry sober cry together that's fine so this guy calls me at 12 30 hey do you uh is Corey home with you no no she's with you you left with her and another and her friend so what do you mean is she with me? She's like, oh, he's like, oh, I came. I was talking to this girl at the, at the bar for like 10 minutes. And I don't know where Corey is. Corey's not, she, she's not here. She's not where she was. I'm like, well, it's in my head. I'm like, it's a bar and a dance place. You could be dancing, whatever. And then he's like, well, no, I could. Oh, you know, it's like, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll find her. I'll, 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 I'll go find her. No big deal. She is. Don't worry. No big deal. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll find her. So I'm like, okay. So Corey's missing. Now, granted, is she missing, missing, or is she, you know, like 10 feet away from him at a, at a club? Because you can't see. It's dark. Okay, I've got bad eyesight. I can't see that far. So someone could be right next to me, and I don't recognize them or see them. Very, very, it's, it's blurry. I can get around. I can not bump into people, but I can't see them with a whole bunch of detail. So, you know, 20, I'm like, okay. So Corey's missed. I'm going to give him five or 10 minutes whatever to find out. So I call Ray back. He doesn't call. I call him back. He's on the phone. He's asking people, have you seen a girl? First of all, he's saying, have you seen Corey? And I'm like, at this point, I know he's drunk because strangers are not going to know what her name is. Then he starts to screw. Then the guy's like, who? He's like, just grab what's, what's she look like? Like, oh, small, um, dark curly hair, um, in, you know, in shape. Um, which in shape means not fat. And he's like, no, I haven't seen anyone leave. You know, that description, but, but this is the door guy. He's getting paid minimum wage. He's not going to, you know, pay attention to every, everyone who comes in and leaves. He's going to, you know, I don't know, subconsciously retain some information, but he's not, this isn't, this is not a professional, professional establishment here. <laughs> so, um, so Ray, so he's like, I'll find her, I'll find her, I'll find her, I'll, I'll find her. So I'm like, okay, okay, I I have to obviously go there now and look for and look for, her, just in case something actually happened, to where, because there's there's in my head there's two, um, there's two outcomes. She's at the club, and Ray just can't see her, um, because she wouldn't leave him. She wouldn't just leave, someone she went with. She's one of those um, extremely responsible people. Like we we come together, we leave together type of, unless you leave, unless she sees you leave, but she won't, unless you announce that you leave. She doesn't announce, she she wouldn't leave without announcing it. That's what I'm trying to say. 
So I get I get a flash because I don't know what what's going on. I get a flashlight. I get my, a, a little knife. Which I would have brought a gun to this to the thing if I had a gun, which I need to get a gun just in case anything were to happen. I don't know. She could have been kidnapped, drugged. She also could be cheating on me. She could have left with some hot guy, and then I would be upset because she didn't send pictures. You know those those kind of scenarios. So. So just in case the worst happens, I'm ready for the worst. Pretty sure n- nothing's going on. So I'm I'm leaving the apartment. I'm 10 steps out of the door. Ray calls me, crying hysterically, saying I'm sorry. Crying hysterically like I'm sorry. And I'm like, did you find her? And he's all, yes, yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And he's so belligerently crying that I think he found her like hit by a car murdered, stabbed in the gutter, and all these things flashed through my head. I'm like, is she okay? He goes, yes, yes, she's fine. She's right here. Then I hear her dumb ass, her dumb, cute voice go, oh my God, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. I've been 10 feet away from him dancing the whole time. He's a little emotional right now. And I get so mad. I get so mad for five or 10 seconds. And I'm just like, how dumb is Raymond. How dumb is Raymond Woods? Okay, so you, let's just put yourself in this scenario. My mom shared her ETA with me. She loves doing that. I'm traveling and this is my ETA to the, okay. Just in case I get kidnapped, no one's going to kidnap you. You're 60 years old. If you're a hot blonde in another country, Istanbul, then I would be worried about you. Anyways. Um, But so if just to anyone who listens to this and you lose somebody and then you um, contact their significant other, you let them know what's going on. When you call back, when you found the person, when you call back, lead with they're okay. Lead with. It's the same thing in Sea of Thieves. When we're playing Sea of Thieves and you um, see other enemy ships on the horizon, Corey would go, enemy ship. I see an enemy ship. West, far away. Well, that that far away part is the most important part. Is the most important part, along with there's an enemy ship there. The direction is secondary. So I need far away ship, whatever the ship is, to the west. That's what I need. I need far away. I need medium. I need close. Close ship, close ship. Then that wakes everybody up. I need important information as quickly as possible. So let's do that from now on, shall we? Jesus Christ, Ray. Jesus Christ. Just lead with that. So I put my knife and my flashlight away. I walk to the bar just to make sure everything's okay. Ray's at the bar. And then I can't find, I I go through the, I go through the club and the bar. I don't see either of them or either of them, whichever word is correct. I can't find them. I go outside. I'm like, Hey, did, uh," and I think maybe they started walking home because of this, um, incident they're like okay the fun's ruined ray ruined it again which he does because he wants to have fun on his accord but everyone else like right wait we ray we don't need i'll need to get completely plastered drunk we don't need to do that okay just have a few beers and he's had a few beers before but that's only when he's driving when he's not driving he's a clank 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 i'm like dude stop it's like four beers it's fun five six seven and shots and all that, not fun anymore. Um, then we're then I'm babysitting. Um, so I go, so I walk there. I can't find him. Um, I'm thinking that they started walking home a different route that I came went there. It was all within walking distance. Ask the person outside; they don't see him. They're like, "No, no I'll, I'll take another look around." I see Ray's dumbass at the bar, ordering another drink. Ordering another drink. Oh, yeah, you don't have a, a drinking problem. You just thought you lost your friend's girlfriend and that she could be dead. You're crying hysterically in public multiple times. Multiple times. And you're, everything turned out to be fine. And your immediate reaction is that hey, let's have another drink so I can forget about that. That happened. What? The drinking should be done. The drink, you, you thought you lost some. The drinking should be done at that point. So I show up and he's like, hey, man, hey. And then he start, he sees me and starts crying. He's like, I thought I lost her. I thought I lost her. T- taking his responsibility on, her, on on himself. 
he's like, no, no, no I, sh- I, I should know where she is. Um, I, you know, she's your girlfriend. I should, I, I'm, I, you know, I should be at least somewhat responsible for her like whereabouts. And, you know, I, I'm the guy I'm responsible. That doesn't mean that she can't. And this is, this created a whole other argument and discussion. It's like, it's not your responsibility to make sure that I'm safe. And I was like, is it cause she took it as a guy, a uh, male, female thing. I'm like, no, no, no. It's not his responsibility, male, female. It's his responsibility as your friend. So he has to make sure that you're okay. So if he were to just disappear, you wouldn't feel responsible. You wouldn't feel like, oh, I need to find my friend. You wouldn't feel that way. It's like, of course you would. She's taking it as a men always try to protect women because women they're they're helpless. It's like, no, 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 no. I'm not saying you're helpless. But if a bigger guy, I'm helpless against some guy, most guys. There are guys that could pick that could pick me up and rape me. And I could not do anything against it. I'm six foot, 200 pounds, six foot, six foot, one, 200 pounds, 205 pounds around. I think the last time I weighed myself, there are dudes that can hold me down while I'm completely sober and do whatever they want. So there's definitely going to be people that can do that to you. Even if I had a weapon, even if I had a gun, they could probably still get to me. The only thing I would think is if I had a gun I, and they were a, a little ways away, I could probably handle myself against someone. And they, are not allowed to have a, a gun. So, but this whole woman thing where I can take care of myself. No, nobody can take care of them. If there's what, two or three people, you're going to take care of yourself. If two or three guys decide to, you know, kidnap somebody, or if one guy decides to no, or drug you at the bar. And then she left her drink unattended and then took a, a few sips of it. She admitted to that. And she was like, well, that wasn't very smart. And she's like, but it's not that big of a deal. I only took a sip or two. <sighs> but you can take care of yourself though, right? He's like, so so you can take care of yourself. So if some guy attacks you out in public, you can take care of yourself, right? So do I not fight him? Do I let him beat you up? Oh, you want, oh, but no, the different, you can take care of yourself, I thought. Oh, okay, okay. I'll, I'll let you call the police and fend, fend this attacker out, and I'll just sit and watch because, you know, we're equal. Every, everyone's equal. And we're not here to protect. I was like, I don't care if Ray was being attacked. If I lost Ray, I would, fr- I would freak out. And like, no, the friends we go with, it's everyone's responsibility to make sure that they at least get to their car okay. If they're drinking, obviously they don't drive. But if they're sober, you you walk them to the point where you can see them enter their car and they drive off. That's your the min, bare minimum. The bare minimum. If you, if you want to go beyond that, give me a text when you get home. When you're in your house, you're cool. Because where do attackers wait at night? Where do attackers wait between your car and your home? They want to get you in between there. Usually they don't attack you in the house. Because it's locked and whatever. There's more issues. They see anyone. Guy, girl. But if if they're a guy, it's going to be someone smaller. So it's going to be a girl. So they can overpower them. They usually don't attack guys the same size as them. That's besides the point. The bare minimum. So then he goes off on this responsibility. He's like, no, it's my responsibility um, to make sure, like, you're the, the one that was here. Like, we have a responsibility to each other. And then she brings up a good point. Well, if if you if it's your responsibility to make sure I'm okay for the whole night, should you be drinking this much? That hits him. That hits him right in the gut. And she's like, and he's like, ah. Oh. He, he had to go to the bathroom for a second, think about it. He comes out, he's like, you were right. So if it's, if, if it's my, I have a responsibility to not get hammered. And especially if it's like a, if it's just them two, if it's like a big group, then you can kind of um, shed off some of that responsibility onto others. But even then that's not okay. Everyone should have a few drinks, get a little buzzed, have a good time. But if something were to happen, you can sober up really quick. It's not a, you're fumbling over things. This guy, Ray was making so much noise at four or five o'clock in the morning. He's trying to, he's sleeping. He's uh, uh, like moving around. I can hear him moving around in the, in the bed being loud. He was hit. He was like bumping into the walls. He was turning things over, moving his bags. Like, I can't find my wallet. I can't find my wallet, which is a thing to, oh no. He said, I can't find my things. And I'm like, what things are you, what things? Why are you reorganizing all of your stuff loudly at four? Th- we have a, a neighbor upstairs and on both sides of us. I'm like, what do you? What are you doing? What 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 has come of what has come of you, Ray? 
can't find my things. And I'm like, what? You don't need things. Just go to sleep. He's like, oh, my, my wallet, my wallet. I can't. I was like, okay, well, that's a, that's an issue because you need your wallet. We find his wallet. He lays back down. Then, then I hear him talking. He calls his friend Dylan and is talking l- loud enough to where I can hear him in the other room, laughing, giggling, having a good time. I'm like, what are you? I was like, could you keep it down, please? Keep it. Just talk normal. Just talk in a normal voice. Like, oh, uh, just stop. Stop. So that was the Raymond weekend. It was fantastic. Everything was really, really fun. Until besides the UFC, the UFC two sixty four five two sixty five, it wasn't wasn't as good as I thought. Of course, I was hoping Derek Lewis would win, but Derek Lewis is. Oh, just got outclassed, outclassed last weekend. I was very, very, very disappointed. So I have to go in not wanting people to win or lose because based off of that, then the whole pay-per-view changes. So I'm just going to go to watch it as a fan from now on. I was like, ooh, I hope, because I wanted Derek Lewis and Francis Naganu, uh, Naganyu to fight again so, so they can redeem that terrible fight last time. But then in my head, I'm thinking, why do I want to see two people who had a, the worst UFC fight ever to fight again? Then I was like, oh, okay, put this new guy in there. Let's see what, put this, put this up and coming guy, put him in there that I've never, I think I've seen him fight once or twice. And I'm like, I'm a casual UFC fan. So, but we just blocked risky, a risky connection. I didn't click on anything, buddy. But, uh, so yeah, that was the Raymond weekend. So we also watched uh, Black Widow. All three of us went to watch Black Widow. We found a movie theater that doesn't charge $25 a movie ticket. It was $10 a movie. Oh, thank God. And the and the theater wasn't packed, so it was nice. Granted, it was, I think, the second weekend it was out, second or third weekend. Oh, so wonderful. And then Raymond complains that $10 is too expensive. He goes, no, down in Apple Valley, it's... Uh, or down in the high desert. He doesn't live in Apple Valley. I used to live in Apple Valley. He goes down in um, the high desert. At um, it's it's six dollars. I was like, on the weekend it's six dollars. I was like, it's this Friday night. Friday night. I know one hundred percent that it's not. I I live there most of my life. I one hundred percent know it's not. It's around ten dollars, ten, twelve, fifteen at times. He's he's like, no, no. I'm like, Whew. unless you're talking about. The movie theater 10, the one that nobody goes to, the one that's falling apart, I don't know what that one is. But all the other movie theaters, they have somewhat normal prices. Now, on the weekdays, yes, you, it can go down to $6. I agree with you on that. Yes. If you get the early bird special, if you're over 65, then yes. But you're not. You may look it, you old fuck. But anyways, um, so we go see Black Widow. And then I watch um, some reviews about it, um, some spoilers. Um, YouTube videos explaining all of the different things, like the the stuff, the um, the hidden stuff, the Easter eggs, and a lot of people didn't like that movie. That was one of the best movies in the Marvel franchise. Uh, period. Now I could be biased because I love Scarlett Johansson, and I love Scarlett Johansson's little sister. Now she's a fan favorite, and then the dad, the dad I love, he's from Stranger Things. It was good. The storytelling was good. It was edited differently. The fight scenes are always like quick, like quick editing, quick cuts. And I just, I think that's just how movies are now. And it bugs the shit out of me because it disorients everything. And I want to see, you know, on one shot, a, you know, at least 10, they should, it should be like every five seconds or every 10 seconds they cut. Not every two, every two. I don't know what's going on. I can't follow it. It's quick. I have to like, I have to study it. I'm like, okay, blah, 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 blah. So, and then when you, you're cutting quickly, you're not telling a story while they fight. Who has the upper hand here? It just looks like people hit, like punching, hitting their fists together. So it's not real. And then anytime you watch these superheroes fight, and she's not a superhero, but whatever. Um, watch these superhero movies and they're fighting and they're not fighting realistically. Because we know how two human beings fight. If you train to fight, you see them fight. You see MMA is how they would fight. Besides low blows and eye gouging and all that stuff. That's how human beings fight. That's a the closest version that you can get to watching two human beings fight. 
two trained people. But now you add knives and you know weapons, and that changes everything. That changes the whole fighting thing. But two people with fists and legs, that's how they fight. So when they're doing these spectacular reversals, and it looks then it looks like pro wrestling, and they're doing hurricane ranas. There's a lot of spinning head scissors in this movie, and I'm like, that does not, that doesn't happen in a fight. She'd get dumped on your stupid Black Widow neck, and she'd be paralyzed, kind of like how Lita was almost paralyzed, just dumped on her head. Just oh, you wanna, you wanna jump on my arm, spin around, grab my head with your legs, and then do a you know a little 180, and then flip me around. You know, you just drop her, all right? Like I'm carrying you. I can just drop you whenever I want. Oh, and I'm a man, so I'm stronger than you. Drop you right on your head. Like stop doing that. Make her look, make her look strong and powerful. That she outquicks them. Okay, has a little gadget, zaps them, and then hits them with her little batons on the back. A little pink. Make her use her speed and her athleticism to her advantage. But if she gets in there and mixes it up at close range, the stronger man is going to have a huge advantage. But she's a superhero. She's not genetically enhanced. As far as we know. But the backstory, the story that they told in the movie was good. The, they have intimate, they have these, these they have characters in the stupid superhero costumes. And I think they did this on purpose, sitting at a dinner table. I'm going to spoil this movie. So if you haven't seen it yet, go watch it. It's good. Um, but they have these intimate family moments that make you laugh that make you not like one of the, the family members. And then in other scenes that the, everything slows down and then they have like this intimate family moment. And it's like, Oh my God, it's so good. It's so good. I don't want to overly spoil it, but man, that's, Oh, loved it. The Nirvana cover song at the beginning, the opening credit scenes, I'm like, Oh, this is going to be, it might be a little bit different. This might be a little bit different. I'm kind of into, I'm liking it. I liked it from the start. And I like the middle part. And I like the ending part. It was really, it was good. I didn't have, I don't, I'm, I'm not a huge comic book nerd. So I didn't know who the taskmaster was. I've heard of him, but I don't know his lineage or whatever. So when it turned out to be someone that wasn't the taskmaster in the comic books, everyone's like, no, really, it's the taskmaster. I'm like, they're changing it. They're changing it. It's okay that they change it. That's fine. They're doing their own thing. There's millions of Marvel universes out there. Okay? Millions. So I don't want to hear that that's not canon. There's, this is just another um, splinter of the universe. So shush. Quiet. They can do whatever they want. And that's another thing. I saw, oh, what was it? Um, I've been watching Agent Carter. But the thing that people, I love when people get upset about comic book characters when um, they change with the times or they make a comic book character that's usually a man, a woman, or they make the man gay or bisexual. It's a, it's a comic book. So there's, there's multiple universes in the DC universe and the DC um, comic book world. There's endless versions of these comic book characters, endless of all of them. That's how they are going to, you know, if a character dies and you love them, they find out that they just bring them in from another universe and, hey, your favorite character is back, okay? Which means that there are no stakes anywhere. There's no, and that's what annoys me because Iron Man, oh, Iron Man died in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I saw him. They can just bring him, they can just bring him back and time travel exists, right? So if you want another Iron Man movie, you just go back in time and then that's how that works. Oh, okay, cool. Um... So none of that really matters in the grand scheme of things. As far as an audience wanting to see the character on screen again, none of that matters. As far as the storyline goes, it matters because that character sacrificed himself for the greater good and blah, 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 blah. But this, this, um, people were upset because Robin came out as bisexual. One of the versions in the DC comic book, he came out as bisexual. And people are going to, this is the woke uh, of society. First of all, we all knew he sucked dick. We all knew it. It's been a running joke that Robin's been gay from the beginning. They just confirmed it. You know he's gay. Okay? Batman knew he was gay. It's not a secret. If Robin came out to Batman, the conversation would go something like, Hi, Batman, I was just 
letting you know. For some reason, he's like a Puerto Rican, you know, feminine man. Just letting you know that I'm I'm gay. I just don't want to come out to you here in the back cave where it's safe. And Batman, uh, I know, I know. Is it because of all you're, you're the world's greatest detective? No, uh, Alfred knew. Alfred's uh, to hell. My my parents who've been shot in the head twenty years ago who never met you, they figured it out that you were gay. Your name's Dick Grayson. You joined the circus. You flew around in tights with your family until they died. And then you moved in with a 40 year old man who dresses in a leather bat outfit. I'm pretty sh- odds suggest that you're gay and that's fine. I don't care what you do when the cow's off, unless you want to put the cow back on. I don't know what you're into when you do that. Okay. But it's going to be fine. Like how dumb do you think, you you know he's you know he's gay. His name's Robin, the little colorful bird. He's not a bat. Your name's Robin. That's what you you picked. Robin, the flying Graysons. Your your family named you Dick. You don't think they had some intuition? It, we, well, we know your father was like. Well, he's obviously gonna suck dick. So. Put that, just, that's what his name's gonna be. So he's not confused. We don't wanna raise a kid that's confused. From the start, we're gonna let him know what he's attracted to. Like, how? Anyway, I don't understand the uproar. You can make, you can make Batman gay if you want to in a universe. Doesn't matter. If you've set the precedent that there are endless universes, there are universes where Batman's an elephant. If you wanna get crazy, there's, so who cares? Whatever. And also, we've had enough, um, bat, you know, superhero characters that are straight white guys that do those things. That, you know, have sex with Catwoman or have sex with, um, or Batgirl or whatever. There was an animated thing where Batman had sex with Catwoman or Batgirl, which was really hot, by the way. But anyway, but I I don't get turned on by animation. But that was pretty. That was, that was, that was I like that one. That was pretty good. But we've had rate. We've had PG Batman. We've had um, with Adam West, Pow Zap. You know, Blau. We've had all those things. So and we've also had like the a rated R version of Batman and the Joker killing each other, um, children being killed, uh, Robin being murdered. All those things we've had. Every, so why can't that? What's the problem with it? So if, if I don't like, say, because I, I don't want to go see a movie where Robin is, you know, sucking some guy off. Guess what I do? I don't go to that movie. It's real simple. I don't go see that. I don't buy the comic book that Robin is bisexual in. If I don't, if I don't like it. If you don't like something, you don't have to watch it. It's real simple. And they, these are all people, people who are upset. i are they comic book fans? Are they people buying comic books? Are they are they the upset people on Twitter and on the internet? Like I don't buy comic books. Do do I care what's in a comic book? No. I don't. At all. So if if you're gonna make a Christopher Nolan, it's realistic, gritty. I like Batman the character. I I, I enjoy like the psychology behind he doesn't kill, um, even though he drops people on their heads and what like Batman, you, you, you obviously killed him. You threw five bat stars or batarangs into his chest. I think, I think he's dead Batman. There's jokes about it all over the place, but that, that, um, that inner tug of war about what, if I would just kill the Joker, everything would be safer, but I can't kill because then I become him. Like is killing justified. And there's this whole thing around that. That's his whole character. And that's what um, uh, makes that, I don't know, that rivalry or that um, the, du- the duality. I don't even know if that's the comparison, the stark in contrast, the, the contrast. I don't know what, what word I'm trying to think of, but that's what makes that whole thing interesting. Is the, not only are they fighting on, like on, at a, the phys- on, they're fighting physically, but they're also fighting mentally. They're having a contrast. 
or, or having a issue or a, uh, what is the word? I'm going to figure out the word. I, I don't care if this podcast comes to a screeching halt. I've been talking for 55 minutes and I'm going to figure it out. The, not the polarization, the tension, the, yeah, the tension between the two, I guess tension would work. The tension between the two is that because they're fighting not only physically, but psychologically as well. There. That was five minutes of me trying to figure out a word. And I still didn't figure it out, but I found a word that kind of fits in. That kind of fits in. And I did talk about, like, Jamie, uh, Britney Spears' father, Jamie, agrees to step down for a conservatorship. And I see all these freaking tools online being happy about this. And I'm like, they don't know Britney Spears. They don't know her. Just because you watched Oops, I Did It Again, you know, it has like, you know, a billion or two views on YouTube. It doesn't mean you know her. She could be bat shit crazy. We don't know. Have you seen the videos of her twirling? She's not all there. And I don't know to what degree do we let her take control of her wealth, her you know, and just destroy it? Because she's obviously on medication. So has, has she been to a therapist and the therapist says, has she gotten multiple? I, we don't know. I don't know. But this dad just says, like, I don't need this headache anymore. And he could be, a, you know, a controlling asshole. Or he just could be, I'm looking out for my daughter. And this is what's best for her. This is tough love. And tough love is the thing. So who knows? I don't. But people who do, who've never cared about Britney until they found out she was in a conservatorship and now she cares. Now everyone, free Britney, Britney, we need to save her. What? For people who are all about women empowerment, you don't think she can, do, if she doesn't have the ability to do that, there's something wrong then. There's something wrong. So I don't know. This is, this is a very weird, um, news story that people are getting involved in other people's actual private lives to where internet pressure and outrage is um, forcing families to act the certain way to act. And so I don't think, I don't believe a judge would basically handcuff one of the most popular people on the planet, unless there's a good reason to do so, unless she's has experiences Unless she's went crazy, unless she's had issues uh, that she's not responsible for herself. I, I know I saw a video that she posted on her Instagram where she talks about accidentally burning down her gym because of a candle. She's like, well, I don't have a lot of equipment because I burned down my gym. And she talks about it like it's no big deal, like things have happened like this before. So it's not a huge deal to you that you, because you're just rich and you can just buy what, that's not a huge deal. So I don't understand. I don't, that's crazy. But this other funny, this is a funny story. I'm going to get off, off a serious topic here. This is on, this is on Fox News. This is so funny. This is so funny. This guy tried to rob a bank. Okay, it, the uh, the um, title of I can't read the title of the article is "Bank Robbery Foiled When Teller Can't Read Stick Up Note." I'm like, what is going on? The man was sentenced to four years behind bars and two years under supervision, and he needs a penmanship uh, course. Obviously, a British man allegedly botched a bank robbery because of a handful. Oh, sorry, handful. I can't even read a handwritten stick up note that was so sloppy, sloppy the teller couldn't read it. That would-be robber was part of a short-lived spree in the East Sussex by 70, 67-year-old Alan Slattery. Slattery? That's a hell of a last name. And, you know, if you're going to start robbing places, do it when you're old. You know, say if you're old and, like, Social Security isn't kind of cutting it, just politely rob banks until they catch you and throw you in jail. What um, that included a second failed stick-up and one successful theft of $3,300. Sussex, Sussex police said Slattery was sentenced to four years behind bars, but they have a picture of this man, old ass, man, old bald man, kind of looks like Raymond. The note says your scream won't stop what 
GR, this is worse than me. Great. Just hand over the tens and twenties. Think don't the think of the I don't know what that says. Does it say what your screen won't stop what I've just what I got just oh okay. So that that's terrible. What it actually says is your screen won't stop what I got. What I've got, just hand over the tens and twenties. Think about the customers. That's not. I thought it said scream. You have to see this note. It's terrible. And this guy should be in jail for terrible penmanship. Oh, Jesus. It was god awful. Yeah. Uh, Fox News. I don't care about the political leanings of all these people. This is a good, this is a good story. Bank robbery foiled when teller can't read stick up note. Go, go look at that freaking note. It is awful. Anyways, that's been this week's episode of the Chase Carter pod, Chase Carter Concept Podcast. Hopefully, the computer doesn't shut off in the next ten seconds. I get to upload this. Thanks, and I'll talk to you guys next week. Uh,